Hey, it's Zeke, and I'm joined with Genesis Sawusu, a man who was raised on the shoulders of many, who's just released his album, Smiling With No Teeth, which means pretending it's okay when it's not. Um, I looked at your TED Talk that you did with for Sideways, and that's where I got a man that was raised on the shoulders of many from. Was that going to be the original intro for Smiling With No Teeth, or could have been the intro? Yeah, it definitely could have been. Um, I mean, yeah, as you probably gauged, that was, that was where the title came from. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, honestly, once I wrote that poem, I wrote that poem so many years ago and it just always stuck with me. Um, and I knew I wanted to use it in some sort of greater capacity and I just didn't really know why, but yeah, especially those last like four or so lines, um, First kiss was a fist, first love was a leech, crying with no tears and smiling with no teeth. Just stuck with me for forever. Um, and yeah, this is the capacity it grew into. It became the title of my debut album. Everything is everything <laughs> or all or nothing means nothing. You said on the back end of it. That, that line stuck with me and I was like, such powerful to open up in an autobiography kind of way in form of mm. being in TED Talk and performing. Yeah. Um, I mean, just going on TED Talk at the time was just like so crazy for me. And I wanted to, I mean, as I do in every aspect and every uh, circumstance, just wanted to open up with something that I felt was wholeheartedly me and the the most like uh, potent version of me at the time. And I felt like, yeah, that poem um really expressed what i felt i wanted to express at the time and and that song sideways as well um with the whole band and choir um yeah i always just want to put the the strongest version of genesis Owusu at the forefront at all times now the question i have from that though is when are you more andre 3000 and when are you more mclovin <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it's always like a 50-50 of both, man. Like, you know, I mean, I, at this point when I've released an album and I've released these music videos and these live touring, everyone is surprisingly, uh, everyone surprisingly thinks I'm ice cold all the time. What's cooler than being cool ice cold? But, you know, like when I'm not on stage, I'm just chilling. I'm playing video games, watching anime, definitely on some McLovin vibes, you know, just, <laughs> just full nerding out. So it's always like a healthy 50-50, I'd say. What video games you've been playing? Um, I just, uh, me and my girlfriend just played this game, It Takes Two, fire, fire game, like fire co-op, you know, like split screen, Yeah. Um, wholesome game. Um, what else have I been playing? I just started this this game, Control. It's like some like telekinesis, first third person shooter type deal. Fire. I can go on forever. So you don't get me started on this interview, the whole interview. In your spare time, when you're not writing or recording, you're on the video games hard. <laughs> yeah, man. I, you know, even when I am writing and recording, I got my Nintendo Switch so I can go on the move. Mm -hmm. Now, your influence, you talked about being Kanye, Andre 3000, Prince, Erica Badu. Who do you want to influence with your music? Um... I mean, honestly, any anyone it will reach in a substantial way. Um, I, I make my music for myself, honestly, um, but I've never had the goal of being like a pop star or just like some guy with a random three million people who know the song but don't know the artist. Like I would just love for people who get it to get it, you know, like mm -hmm. people who really can understand what I'm trying to do and resonate with the music and the artist. Um, that's, that's who I would love to hear it. And honestly, just little weirdo black kids as well, who just don't know, really know what to do or what they can do to, I'd love to be some sort of figure who they can look at and see that, you know, the sky's the limit there and there are no boundaries. Now you've you've been creative director on all your music videos recently. Um, if you were given your choice to shoot your own Os win an Oscar for a movie, 
you talk, there's a line about winning an Oscar versus winning an award. And I can't, I try to, I'm drawing a blank on the song title that you have it in. But what would the movie be about if you could direct a movie that would win an Oscar? Whoo. You know what? I feel like it would probably be like some weird, like psychological thriller um, with like some kind of crazy art house elements, like some, some sort of like David Lynch type vibe, you know, just something real weird. Um, kind of doesn't make sense, but doesn't make sense in a, in a fun way. And like, I want to, I want to have one of those movies where when you type in the title, the first result is explain this, please. <laughs> like <laughs> blah, 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 explain. That would, that would be my Oscar winning movie for sure. You performed covers of the Sex Pistons and Talking Heads. What do those bands mean to you? Um, Talking Heads, along with Prince, were, were one of the main influences for Smiling With No Teeth. Um, just going back to embracing the essence of weirdness, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um I feel like Talking Heads are a prime example of that and just making weird cool um, and just being wholeheartedly themselves and, and figuring out something new from that. Um, Sex Pistols, uh, I've always had some sort of affinity with punk music, even though for the longest time my knowledge of it has been very superficial. I've always just loved the energy of it um, and the soul of it and the soul of rebellion um, is something that I've carried throughout my life in a, a different kind of way. Not, not like tearing down walls and like kicking down doors type rebellion, but just like something very intrinsic in trying to break out of boundaries and, and, you know, not be boxed in. So I've always appreciated that element of, of punk. Um, so I wanted to, uh, I guess pay homage to, to that, when I, when I covered Sex Pistols and yeah, when it was Talking Heads, it was just paying homage to that essence of weirdness. Now you've performed, you've got a live performance from one of your shows in Oxford Arts, um, the song Drowning. What is this song all about? What can you tell me about this? So this song uh, is featuring my friend Kieran J. Callanan, um, who was playing guitar all over the album as well. Um, this song is the part of the album where you recognize um, this dark part of yourself internally and you recognize that's not you, but just the part of you and you're able to let it go. You figure out that you need to let it drown.
performing in front of a live audience there. What was that like for you? In America, we haven't opened up our doors to perform in front of live audiences. What was that first time performing in front of a crowd like for you? That was really fun. <clears throat> um, yeah, no, that was really fun. Drown, Drown is one of my favorite songs on the album. And um, when we played it, I just wasn't, I needed the crowd to go crazier. <laughs> like, I was like, yo, this is like my favorite song. Like, we need to go harder than this. I jumped in the crowd um, because I needed the crowd to go harder. <laughs> and, and they did. Um, because, yeah, it was one of my favorite songs. It was, it was so much fun. Um, to, to yeah to just just be able to do that you know post all these hard ass covid restrictions um to just be able to jump into the crowd and and be marching with everyone going crazy to one of my favorite songs yeah it was an amazing experience what have you learned from your first ep uh car drive to the making of smiling with no teeth about yourself in the process um I don't know if I've learned anything particularly new rather rather just like all the experiences I've gone through from then till now have really reinstated who I am and why I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like totally solidified the artist that I want to be in that there are no rules to the artist who I want to be. Like I want to be able to do anything I want at any given time. And through every experience I'm learning that no matter what any outside forces say, that's 100% something I can and will do. And yeah, that's something that I feel like listeners might be able to, to uh, get a gauge of on Smiling With No Teeth from just like the wide range of everything on that album. There's no looking back as, say, from the album too. <laughs> No looking back from the hey. past. We're only moving forward. <laughs> which, is, which is one of my favorite standout tracks from the album. Um, I mean, it's how do you move forward and look at things that have been negative um, to move forward in, in, in life for you? I actually watched this movie, um, Jojo Rabbit, yesterday. And that was a... <clears throat> There was a phrase at the end of the movie that I'm going to paraphrase because I can't remember it word by word, but it's like, it was essentially like, let everything happen to you, beauty and terror, both um, because no feeling is final. Um, and it's essentially just like, yeah, let, let everything happen to you and everything that happens to you will build you further um, into who you're meant to be. And you can't really get bogged down in any particular moment because there's a whole future ahead of you and you have no idea what's coming next. So it's always good to keep that kind of thing in mind. Like if something bad is happening to you, it's because something greater is on the horizon. Do you hate waiting for those good things to come to you or what do you hate waiting for the most? <laughs> I'm loving these little, <laughs> these little segue points you're putting in. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really hate waiting. I'm a pretty patient person, to be honest. I can wait forever. I can wait on you forever, you know? When, time, when the time comes, the time comes. When you're hungry, come on now. Yeah, I hate waiting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let, I do hate that. You know, when I'm, when I'm hungry and I'm microwaving something, that, that microwave <laughs> timer, I swear, it goes, like half it goes at half time, you know? What does the song Waiting On You mean to you? before we get into seeing your live performance? Um, so Drown was a little further ahead in the album where you recognize that there's this internal darkness that's not you, that you can separate from. Whereas Waiting On You is earlier in the album where you haven't quite figured this out yet and this internal darkness is essentially trying to suck you in and make you like it's only one. Um, and it's told from that perspective, this, the perspective of the darkness. Well, let's enjoy you performing the song Waiting On You from Oxford Art Factory. Here it is for you to enjoy. One step, two step, three. Down into the meadow. You could call it a garden of Eden, but you'd be lying. 
You saw me, the merchant with the black fur coat, and I waved you over. I said, come here now, don't waver. Let me show you my wares I have. Dolls for sale, dolls for sale. Smiles for sale, smiles for sale. You asked me why I look so much like you, I said, because I am, and you are me, and I am you, and you are me, and I am you. And by God, we looking sexy. Yeah! deal with mental health right now a lot of the album deals with mental health depression and race how do you personally deal or would tell someone to deal with that and their feelings and stuff they're going on with it's really hard to give advice on it just because every person's journey with it is so personal and so different from one another Mm -hmm. um personally there are strategies that I 
have found that work for me that, you know, may not be as effective for other people, but, you know, personally, I like, like on the album, it helps me to be able to detach my own identity from this, you know, chemical imbalance that's happening in my brain, you know, like this is not me. This is just something that is happening to me or inside of me. Yeah. Um, stuff like that really helps. Um, and yeah, just taking it day by day. And, and like I said before, just accepting that even though I feel this way, this feeling is not final and there are greater things on the horizon. Perfect. Um, gold chains, the video for that one, where are all those gold chains at right now? (laughs) Do you got, can I get one? Can I borrow one from you? (laughs) (laughs) They're probably in the bottom of that pool that I drowned in at the end. Yeah. Um, um, I actually have no idea. I think they all got returned, actually. Okay. So they weren't they <laughs> weren't your we're, personal gold chains right now. No, 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 no. <laughs> we're we're more fiscally responsible than that. You know, we're getting that money back. <laughs> Are you invested in the stock market? Do that? Wait, in Australia, do they have like Dogecoin and stuff like that over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do all that. I'm not. I'm, I haven't gotten into crypto yet. <laughs> I'm, uh, but I'll, I'll get into it possibly. But now, nah, when when um, even before I get into crypto, I know better than to spend all my money on gold chains. So yeah, we're fiscally responsible. We returned all them, <laughs> and uh, we got our money back. <laughs> um, if what do you want to be known for? At after it's all after the career, let's say 15, 30 years from now. If we go Genesis of Wosu, what do you want to be known for? Um, well, I mean, f- uh, first and foremost, like I said, I honestly just like make this art for myself. Mm-hmm. And all the legacy stuff is just a bonus to me. So even if in 30 years I'm not remembered, um, I feel like if I continue just doing exactly what I want to do, I'll have no regrets. But with that being said, um, if I am to be remembered, um, just be for doing some crazy stuff, you know, some wild, iconic, boundary breaking art that, yeah, like I said before, might inspire some little black kids somewhere to realize that they're not boxed in or bounded, um, bound by any, restrictions or or perspectives whether it be their own or someone else's Mm -hmm. you know you can do what you want to that's what i would like to be remembered for that's i mean that's there's no boundaries to the music that you can make i'm excited for a folk album from you one down one day down the road uh you working (laughs) on a dance ep or something like that i could see you doing everything there's no genre that you can be put into and i appreciate that in the art form that you're giving us and it's something that i i me personally i think genres are dead is that something that you believe too yeah i mean definitely for me uh they're, they're still very like pervasive in in trying to like navigate through the music industry just because like on a consumer basis like i can see how helpful they are for yeah, I guess like the consumer or the people marketing the songs to the consumer, because you might be, you know, I might be talking to someone in the industry mm-hmm. and they'll be like, you know, the music's cool, but how do I even describe this? Like, how do I figure out what box to put this in so I can market this to someone, you know? Um, so it's like, it's definitely, it's for me as the artist, it's more of a hindrance than it is a help. It's not seeing color. Another one. <laughs> Another little pundit on the album. <laughs> it's seeing past it all. Um, and, which I think that that's a great song too for people to listen to from the album is you break down race as something as a black dog and you break you break it down into two different metaphors too for depression and for being race in America or in the world. Um, how is race dealt with in Australia? How did, you know, you grew up in a predominantly white neighborhood, I want to say for sure. And how mm-hmm. did that 
how did that affect you? I know in Minnesota, we may have seen some of the Dante Wright, um, mm. George Floyd cases all happen here in Minnesota. How mm. did that affect you in Australia? Yeah, I mean, Australia definitely has its own um, race problems um, for a lot of different groups, but honestly, predominantly to our indigenous um, community mm -hmm. uh, who have just been like not taken care of properly for centuries and have been like, that's a huge understatement, but it's like, it's a whole thing to get into. Like we've, we've got some pretty like racist structures and, and foundations that this country was built on, you know, as uh, pretty much all like colonized countries in the world. Um, so yeah, like it's, it's just as pervasive here. It, it works in slightly different ways than it, than it does in like America or, or any other country as every country has its own uh, specific experience, but it's just as pervasive here as it is in America, I'd say. Um, so that's why these issues, that's why I know that these things are going on in Minnesota and I live in Canberra, Australia, because mm -hmm. all these things are so universal and they spark the same spark in every person with a conscience, no matter where they are in the world. Um, so that's why I feel like I'm talking about experiences that I've seen or experienced in Canberra, Australia, but vice versa, yeah. they can still spark, you know, something in the mind of someone living in Minnesota. Um, so, yeah. Song about fishing. What inspired this song? Song about fishing was um, a song that we made in like the late stages of the jam sessions for the album. And we had gone through like every genre that we knew existed <laughs> um, in those jam sessions. And you can hear at the start, the very start of the track uh, on the recording, song about fishing. And that's mm -hmm. Kieran, my guitarist, saying, sing a song about fishing because we've sung everything else that we know. Um, and it's, it, it, uh, was essentially me like jokingly freestyling in the studio. But then once I got like the recordings back from the jam sessions, like I just tweaked some lyrics and it turned from this jokey freestyle into like this parable of perseverance in dire circumstances. And it's like one of my favorite songs on the album. So yeah. Well, here it is live from Oxford Art Factory. Song about fishing. This is a song about fishing. The mud in my fingers are dried to a crust. Sleep in my eyes, I pick my rust. My boots have been ravaged in browns and greys. I've seen no scale and I've seen no pay, but still I trudge to a spotless stream. Not a bird in the sky or a Fish in the sea. To dwell in these waters is a foolish way to believe one night that I'll win the day and rise and shine to dawn. I wake to cast my net in a fishless lake. Rise and shine to dawn. I wake casting my net in a fishless lake. Yeah, yeah, get your front lights out. Looks beautiful. Get your front lights out, get your front lights out. I sailed downstream to see what had I pulled my boat along the land. I swam the dirt and walked the stream and off the shore I saw bream and tuna too. Salmon row, do my eyes deceive? But my net I broke. I told my tale to a merchant man. He pitied me a dollar and gave me his hand. He said, Rise and shine to dawn. I wait to cast my net in a fishless lake. Rise and shine to dawn. I wake, casting my net in a fishless lake.
more time if you if you know the words please sing along rise and shine to dawn i wait to cast my net in a fishless lake rise and shine to dawn i wait casting my net in a fishless lake Being a Prince fan, are you excited to perform one day at First Avenue? Oh, of course. Of course. To be even in, like, the same space, let alone the same stage that he was once on, like, is some, like, I don't know, is some spiritual connection type thing, you know? Like, I, it's, it's going to be like a next level experience. I think performing there will like channel something crazy and it will be like one of my best performances ever. What's your favorite Prince song? My favorite Prince song, I wrestle with this in my mind all the time. I feel like it changes from time to time. I feel like right now is probably um, All the Critics Love You in New York from the 1999 album. Such a good one. Hopefully, when you come to the Twin Cities, you will perform that at on First Avenue <laughs> stage. I'm excited to see that. And you can also check out uh, where he recorded at Paisley Park. So when you're doing the routing, sure. talking to your managers, plan some extra time to head out to Paisley Park to see where the all the creation came from. And hopefully we'll yeah. get you out there, too. For sure. For sure. I'll be there. I can't wait. I appreciate your time, man. It's It's been an honor to talk to you on the album. Thank you for making it. Hey, thank you for appreciating it. And thank you for your time. It's been great talking to you. Peace. All right. Peace.